trying to get to the bottom of how the hell did Peter suddenly shift from poverty over to Phaedra. Phaedra comes in. My girl comes in and she's like, that's because it's a backhand deal going on. And I said, that's my girl. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. Now, if this is your first time here, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dave Vaughn, and I'm super excited that you found your way here. We have made it to episode eight. Oh, my. We did it. We did it. We did it. Hey, we did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> of us okay because we did it we made it to episode eight y'all now if you are just now deciding to join us okay go on back to my first impressions of the cast watch that video and then watch all of the recaps that i have done because i have recapped every single episode one two three four five six seven and now eight okay so go get caught up and then make sure you come back and watch these videos as i always say go watch the old ones but i come back okay <laughs> go get caught up but come back now for those of you that have been rocking and rolling and you are all caught up with me as i am catching up to you <laughs> then let's go ahead and get into this thing because maybe episode eight was what what and what Damn. so we start this episode off at breakfast and as you already know breakfast is where we get the opportunity to find out who survived throughout the night right so ct and trishel they come in and they start talking about how they think either bergy or trishel are out of the game right so then all of the people start coming in and then we find out no bergy now i'm not gonna lie to y'all this one this one caught me by surprise, okay? Because I for sure thought Trishel was out of here. I thought that girl was gone, okay? So when Bergie is the one that was chosen, I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that was the first one that actually caught me like, what? <laughs> right? And so Bergie is gone. Immediately, I look for Phaedra's reaction, right? Because the first time when Bergie was banished right it was oh not my burgalicious and oh my burgalicious and this time she gave him the tamra treatment with the boiled eggs my girl was sitting there talking about food i need you to keep consistent emotions with people okay if it was oh my burgalicious last time i needed to be oh my burgalicious this time okay <laughs> because you are giving him the tamra treatment and you are talking about food and it's just not adding up okay it's not it ain't adding up, so I need my girl to be consistent <laughs> in her emotions with certain people. So now I'm not the only one who was watching Phaedra and how she responded to Bergie not being there. Trishel was also watching her and she noticed that the emotions were different, right? And so that, among other things, led to her ultimately saying, okay, Phaedra 100% is a traitor. Now she swear up and down this has something to do with whatever Dan left before he left. Like Dan offered us Phaedra before he left. And I'm just confident that it's Phaedra, 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 Phaedra. But she's watching her like a hawk. So Alan comes in in all of his extraness and he tells them that it is time for an escape. And so the universal conversation is that something about a cabin right they're all asking about this cabin again i have not watched the first season but judging by the way that they're talking i'm assuming that this is some sort of staple in the game like a checkpoint or some sort in the game because they all were like oh is it the cabin it's the cabin and they all seemed terrified so of course at that time i assumed that the cabin was not a good thing and then i found out <laughs> But let's stay on track because I don't want to jump ahead. So Trishel, Peter, and Kevin are all having a conversation. And they're talking about Phaedra and how she's a traitor. And then Trishel brings up the twitch that Phaedra gets in her eye whenever you're talking game to her. Now, 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 now. I don't like the fact that Trishel is on Phaedra as heavy as she's on her. But she's not lying. <laughs> She's not lying. Phaedra does have this twitch that she does with her eye and like she'll do like this weird eye roll or she'll like pucker out her lips whenever you try to talk game to her or she'll do the 
You know what I'm saying? Like she has certain telltale signs. And so Trishel is like, I'm a poker player. And so I look for stuff like this all the time. And Phaedra definitely has these signs that she give away. And the Twitch is one of them. So she's not lying, but it's like, okay, girl, back up. Like, <laughs> back up, right? <laughs> and so Kevin chimes in and he's like, I've noticed that too. And so I'm like, Phaedra, I'm gonna need you to start wearing shades. Like, <laughs> I'm going to need you to start wearing shades because maybe they are catching on and I do not like it. So at this point, Peter, Trishel, and Kevin have decided that they are going to try to recruit Parvati to pull her in to be another vote against Phaedra because Phaedra has so many votes for her, like on her side. They need to recruit as many as they can to be on their side to help to get her out, right? And so they're like, no better person to get than Parvati because Parvati gonna do whatever she gotta do to save herself. And so that's an easy person to try to pull in. We let her know, we're not looking at you, we think you're faithful, you're safe, ah, 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 ah. We wanna work with you to try to go after Phaedra, child. And you know she gonna do it. <laughs> and you know she gonna do it. So Parvati and Peter are having a conversation and here she go throwing Dan under the bus again. You know, I just trusted the wrong person and da 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 Baby, Dan and the bus are gone. They're not even at the castle anymore. I don't even think they are still in Scotland, okay? <laughs> like the bus and Dan are gone. You won't have to let that go and come up with something else, okay? <laughs> so she's having this conversation with Peter and Peter just kind of lets her know, like, don't even trip on that. I just want to call a truce. I want to work with you. I want me and you to be on the same side. And that is the side of the people that want to get Phaedra out. Parvati, of course, agrees. She's like, she still doesn't really trust Peter, but if it's going to get her one extra night inside of the castle, then that's exactly what she's gonna do. And so she is on board and she's gonna try to get Phaedra up out of here. As Parvati and Peter are talking, they don't even realize it, but my girl MJ, now, let me tell you something. You are talking about a secret squirrel, okay? <laughs> MJ is tiptoeing and creeping through the hallways and she starts listening to their conversation. And so once she hears what Peter and Parvati are up to, she decides she's gonna run back and tell everybody. And I'm like, that's my girl. Listen and go tell. <laughs> First 48, my girl got her chicken sandwich. I know that's right. <laughs> Eat your chicken sandwich, MJ. Eat your chicken sandwich. So now there's a conversation that is happening between Sheree, Phaedra, and John, right? And so Sheree asks Phaedra, you know, who, who do you feel weirded out by? Like, who do you get a vibe from or whatever? And so in this moment, I thought, I thought in this moment, that Phaedra slipped up and got too comfortable, right? Because she was like, you know, Peter, Peter is just so this and he's so that and she's going on and on about Peter, but she's saying all of this in front of John. And I'm thinking to myself like, baby, John just saved Peter last night. So why would you say this in front of him? Like you should, come on now. We starting to get a little sloppy now. What, what are we doing? We getting just a little bit too sloppy, right? And so that's what I thought in that moment. Now later on, and we'll get to that when we get to that, but later on I find out, oh girl, genius. Oh girl, genius, right? But I don't think she knew in that moment. I think she was just talking. I promise I don't think that she thought that far ahead because that's not how it plays out. I think she really did have a slip of the moment, but the moment works in her favor later on. And we're gonna get to that. But in that moment, I was like, baby, what are you doing, Phaedra? Now, you done messed up at breakfast <laughs> with the, the no reaction to Bergie, okay? And now you in here talking about Peter in front of John? Like, oh, baby, baby, right? But later on, <laughs> later on, I'm telling you, the Lord is on her side. <laughs> The Lord is on her side, I'm telling you now. So now they're in the cars and they're heading over to their next mission, right? And of course, while they're in the cars, this is an opportunity for Trishel to start campaigning and getting people to hop on the, we gotta get Phaedra out because Phaedra is a traitor. You know what I'm saying? She's trying to recruit her people. So she's pleading her case to the people inside of her car as to why they need to vote Phaedra out tonight. So they pull up to this cabin and Dr. Will is there. like. Why are you here? <laughs> Why are you here? Okay, but you know what? He's smart. Okay, Dan, take notes. Okay, <laughs> he said, no, I'm not going to play this game. I'm not coming out of retirement because my reputation is what it is. But I can host. <laughs> I will 
will definitely come and make an appearance. You can cut the check for me to come in here and host. I'll say a couple of words and then I'll go home. No problem. Dan, you should have did that. <laughs> In any event, Dr. Will is there, they arrive to the cabin, and now I know for sure this cabin is a thing with the show because as soon as they pulled up, everybody was terrified. I'm like, it's a cabin, why are y'all so pressed? Everybody was like, oh no, 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 I don't want to go in. Kate? Kate was the most terrified. I don't know what the cabin was on her season, but my girl got PTSD. She was like, Ain't no, I'm not going in there. <laughs> I don't care what y'all talking about. I'm not going in there. So it's it's definitely something. So they walk inside the cabin and when they walk in, everything looks normal. Like it doesn't look creepy. It doesn't look anything. It looks like a normal inside of a cabin. But when they all get in there, Will locks the door <laughs> and basically tells them that they're going to have to figure their way out. So at that point, they realize, oh, okay, this is an escape room situation, right? So that's their mission today. They're in an escape room. They have to figure out how to get out. So basically, all they really have to do is get everybody outside of the cabin in 30 minutes. Along the way, there's $20,000 worth of gold hidden in different areas. I mean, of course, it's not as easy as, oh, okay, we're just going to get out of the cabin. Like, it's some stuff. <laughs> there are some things that they are going to have to endure while trying to get through these little underground tunnels, but they have 30 minutes to do it and collect the $20,000, right? And so for every person that does not make it out of the cabin, whether the 30 minutes runs out and they're still stuck in the cabin or stuck in one of the tunnels, or they decide to tap out and quit, right? There's a safe word that you say and you know, they'll come in and they'll pull you out of the cabin. Now, I'm not saying the safe word because I don't know what it means and I'm not about to unintentionally cast no spells in my house, okay? <laughs> Oh, there was a safe word and we just gonna say pineapples okay <laughs> and when they say pineapples okay that gets them taken out of the game but when they come out that's a thousand dollars taken away from the pot right the goal is get everybody out collect the twenty thousand dollars worth of gold get shields because there are shields hidden get the shields get the safety and get the 20k in 30 minutes and you know when you say it like that it sounds easy <laughs> Right? So everyone is figuring out that they have to get jobs, right? In order for this to work, you have to, as a team, you do this, let me assign this to you, ah, 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 right? So some people decide they're going to stay in the cabin and work the things inside of the cabin because it was a light situation, right? And if you hold the lights, then that helps them navigate through the tunnels, but you also need the light on the inside so you can tell them how to follow the map, right? There's a map inside of the cabin. So there's people working in and there's people working underneath, right? And so Kate is on the lights. She's like, I'll do the lights. It's pretty simple. I'll stand here and I'll control the lights. So she looks up and she sees this trap door. And I don't know, baby, that triggered something from her previous experience in season one. And she was like, mm -mm, never mind, Kevin, come on. <laughs> she told Kevin, she said, you got this. I don't, I, suddenly, I don't know anything about lights. <laughs> You come right on over here, you got this. And she walks away from that immediately. So the first two to go into the underground tunnel are Trishel and CT, right? Trishel's like, she won Fear Factor, so this is nothing for her. Trying to get this money, and obviously she's trying to get a shield, right? And so her and CT are crawling through, and she finds one of the gold coins. It's worth $5,000, right? And so she's figuring out how to do the coins, and Kevin is up there doing the lights while she's trying to do this, right? As she's doing it, Will comes through this little hole in the cabin and dumps a bucket of bugs. Do you hear me? Worms look like maggots, look like some crickets, like just some bugs all over her. She takes it like a champ, like that meant nothing to her. She keeps going and doing what she has to do, right? So that trap door that Kate saw, that was another way <laughs> for some stuff to pop off. And so as the bucket is being dumped on Trishel, the people inside of the cabin are being sprayed with, I later find out, urine. <laughs> they are being sprayed with animal urine, right? And so I'm shocked because Sheree and Phaedra are taking the urine like champs. Like they, they're standing there and they're taking it. They're taking it, they're taking it, right? And so in that moment where the trap door opens and all of these bugs, because Will dumps a bucket of bugs on top of Kevin and Kate was smart. She got out the way before it went down. Dumps this bucket of bugs on top of Kevin and MJ said that pineapples, pineapple, pineapple, pine and the apple, pine plus apple. Get me out of here now. 
out, right? And so she screams a safe word and they get her out of there. She says she can't do bugs. The worms, the maggots, all of that was just too much for her, right? And so as time is going on, more bugs are coming, more urine is coming. Like it's just happening back to back. And Phaedra's like, nope, I, pineapples. <laughs> Oh, get me out of here immediately I got to go and so now at this point MJ is out of the game and so is Phaedra so we know for sure that $2,000 has walked out the door as CT and Trishel are going through the tunnel CT discovers a shield now it's covered in rats <laughs> but it's still a shield and so he uses this as an opportunity to try to make things right with Rochelle because he didn't save her <laughs> in the other ceremony when he could have he decided no I'm gonna go with John but he uses this as an opportunity to try to make that wrong right right and so he tells her like it's a shield right there if you want it go ahead and get it and so she's like oh my god CT oh my gosh and so she crawls in there she grabs the shield and now we know Trishel is safe right and so at this point inside of the cabin all hell is breaking loose okay not even in the tunnels the tunnels is having a really good moment because CT and Trishel are mending the brokenness right but in the cabin all hell is breaking loose it's just bugs and piss bugs and piss bugs and piss and Phaedra is taking it like a champ. Like, y'all gonna stop playing in my girl face because she hung in there. I thought she was gonna be one of the first ones to tap out. She taking it. She taking the piss. She taking the bug. She taking it. And then it just became too much. And she, pineapples, 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 pineapples. She like, I got to go. I got to get up out of here, okay? <laughs> so she comes running up out of the cabin. Kate was like, you right. Me too. I, it's enough. It ain't worth it. I, I'm out. <laughs> Pineapple, she... <laughs> She's like, I'm not doing it. So she says the safe word as well. And so they get out there and I promise you, this is the part that had me in tears. Somebody need to help me do reaction videos. Cause when I tell you I was on my couch screaming, I was in tears when Sheree ran outside and Phaedra was like, oh baby, you covered in bugs and urine and bugs and urine and Sheree is, ow, ow, get it off me, ow, ow. And she's screaming and hollering. And the funniest part of this entire situation is not the fact that she was screaming and hollering. It's the fact that Sheree is running away from the bugs that are on her. Phaedra is chasing her to help her get the bugs off of her. And MJ is running from her. MJ, it was MJ for me. She took off running. The closer Sheree got to her, the faster she ran. Like, don't come over here with that, okay? I got out of here because I didn't want no parts of that. She takes off running. Like, Phaedra's chasing Sheree. Sheree's walking and MJ is like, she's booking it. Getting up out of here. It was so funny to me. I was in there. Baby, the tears were real. That had me like, holding my stomach laughing. That right there, that was comedy, okay? <laughs> so now John is the first person that makes it out of the tunnel, right? He gets out, he has two pieces of gold. J John is working, okay? We gonna stop playing in his face because John is out here working, okay? He has two pieces of gold, he gets out the tunnel, and at this point, everybody else starts crawling out as well. And so CT comes and he realizes it's still time left and it's one piece of gold left. And so he crawls back into the tunnel and he's like, I gotta go get this other piece of gold. He goes in there, he gets the piece of gold and comes back out and makes it out right, like, by the hair of his chinny chin chin, okay? <laughs> he makes it back out and they collect $15,000. Like they collected all of the gold. Like they did a hell of a job in those tunnels because they got the full 15K. However, because MJ, Sheree, Phaedra, and Kate decided to quit, they get $1,000 a piece deducted. So that's $4,000 from the $15,000. So they walk away with $11,000 added to their prize pot for the winner at the end, right? So I'd be mad. <laughs> would have been mad because they came up out of that tunnel filthy mcnasty mcdirty mcstank mcgross right and those four were just like <laughs> we here so once again the faithfuls decide they're not going to tell who got the shield they're going to keep that a secret and try to set yet another trap so we're back at the castle and poverty takes this opportunity to have a conversation with john and she starts to get emotional 
in this conversation. Now, part of me feels like, yeah, she was faking, but then there's another part of me that feels like some of that may have been real. And here's why. Not because of the Dan situation. I don't think that. But I think the conversation that Phaedra had with her the night before where she was like, you know, you're a mean girl. And the face you make and how she was mocking the face that she makes and all that other kind of stuff. I think that got to party. Just a little bit. She won't admit it because even in her confessional, she was like, maybe I deserve, you know, an award because I'm an actress. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But I think there was a little bit of Phaedra's voice playing in the back of her head. And I think that got to her just a little bit. I could be wrong, but I really do think what Phaedra said got to her just a little bit, right? So she's having this conversation with John. And she's bringing the damn thing up again. I felt like I was back into a corner because I trusted the wrong person. Ah. And John is just sitting there listening to her. And at first, okay, I thought John was eating it up. I thought he was like, oh, man, maybe I made the wrong decision, right? But he, the, his look on his face looks like he's eating it up. Fast forward, we find out maybe not so much. But <laughs> in the moment, I thought he was eating all of that. At this point, Trishel and Poverty have become like top flight security of the we gotta get Phaedra out committee, right? They run around planting all the seeds, trying to get everybody to come together and vote out Phaedra. Shift the focus from Poverty and put it all on Phaedra. This is the goal and this is what they're trying to do. So they're all sitting around talking about why Phaedra is a traitor and why they need to vote her out and why we don't need to worry about Poverty and we need to focus on Phaedra, right? This is the conversation that's happening. And see this, this moment right here, I really didn't like. It made me feel some type of way. I don't know if it's PTSD from Big Brother, but I don't know. But it made me feel some type of way. So Phaedra can't find anybody. She's walking around the house. She's like, where is everybody at? Now, everybody collectively is together having a conversation about her. And so she walks in the room. And as soon as she sits down, everybody starts leaving. And I'm like, that, that pissed me off. That pissed me off. To the average person, they probably wouldn't have cared. I don't even think Phaedra really cared like that. But it pissed me off. <laughs> and again, it may be PTSD from Big Brother, but it pissed me off. Like, don't do that. Don't, don't do her like that. If y'all gonna vote her out, vote her out. But don't, don't, don't do her like that. Okay? Everybody just start getting up and walking off. And I'm like, I hope that was editing. If it was editing, okay, cool. But if y'all really did her like that, I'm, now I'm mad. <laughs> now we are at the round table right and Parvati decides she wants to open up the conversation and she starts talking about why she's so cold and Dan again trusting Dan and how I got her back into a wall and she may not have made the right decision by trusting somebody like Dan right so then Trishel <laughs> chimes in and she starts in with the I think Phaedra is a traitor because of this so she starts talking about these notes I have a notebook and it's filled with notes. I have a list that's this long for Phaedra and da 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 and all these things. And I'm like, okay, well, baby, what, what, what do you have against her? So Trishel starts off by saying that she notices that Phaedra is never nervous about being banished by the traitors. She's never nervous. She says she's real comfortable in this game. She doesn't act like a faithful. She doesn't do the things of a faithful. She just walks around here extremely, she says she doesn't have faithful behavior. She walks around extremely comfortable as if she's a traitor. And then she goes <laughs> into the emotions or you know her responses to people being banished by the traitor and she's never surprised she's never shocked just a bunch of stuff that in a way I understand in a way I understand but in another way it's like that's not the evidence that we need you to use like I get where you coming from I get it because I'm looking at those things too but that's not enough for you to sit here at this table and say like when you come to these people you have to have hard evidence and it makes sense <laughs> it makes sense but it does not to these people so you have to realize you have to learn your audience okay learn your audience and read the room and when I say your audience I mean the people you're playing the game with those type of things don't stick okay maybe them grits ain't sticking okay <laughs> you gotta cook them a little longer <laughs> So as she's giving all of these reasons about, you know, Phaedra being emotionless and all this other kind of things, Phaedra looked that lady right in her face and said, I'm not frantic like you. <laughs> she told that lady, I'm not frantic like you. And she's not wrong because Trishel, ooh. <laughs> Trishel 
girl is frantic as hell. She looked that lady right in her face and said, I'm not an actress, okay? And how, who I am is who I am. And I'm sorry that I am not frantic like you, okay? Shut Trishel up. So after Phaedra shuts down Trishel with this whole, you know, your emotions, blah, 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 blah situation, Trishel decides, okay, cool. We don't want to deal with that. Then let me go to something that really makes sense, right? <laughs> she just knew, I got you. Don't you worry. I got you. <laughs> So she pulls out the facts that Dan offered up her as a traitor to them before he left. She was like, Dan's a great game player and he knows how to play these types of games. And so he wouldn't just leave and just leave. He's going to give us information before he leaves. And I believe he handed you over to us as he was walking out the door. She's not wrong. <laughs> She's not wrong. But again, shut up. <laughs> Back up, like, but she's on it. Like, Trishel is spot on. She's on it. So Kevin decides it's his turn to chime in, and he brings up the eye twitch thing to Phaedra. So Kevin decides that it's his turn to talk, okay? And so he brings up the eye twitch thing to Phaedra. Now, ugh, I don't really like this moment because even though Phaedra kind of, like, played it off and was like, I've never heard about that in my life with the duo, you can tell that that, like, affected her a little bit. Like, what you trying to say about my eyes? Like, what, would you, you know what I'm saying? Like, say something about my gameplay, say something about you, but don't, don't talk about my eyes. Like, what you mean? You know, that affected her. And she was just like, I ain't never heard nothing about that. I don't know what you're talking about. All of the things that Trishel said, she was just like, girl, bye. And she was, but that eye twitch thing, that, that got her. I noticed that, that got her. So, we gonna get up off my friend's eye twitch, okay? Leave her alone, okay? So then John decided it's his turn to take the floor. Let me tell you something. These last couple episodes, okay? <laughs> John has been climbing my list of people that I am watching. Do you understand me? John is slowly becoming one of my favorites, okay? He chimes in and he's like, look, Parvati, I hear everything you're saying about the dance situation. I don't really know what these people are talking about with this whole Phaedra thing, but I'm going to say this. <laughs> At the end of the day, Dan was still your buddy. You were still an accomplice to all of his foolishness that he had going on. And then at the sacrificial ceremony, and that's what we're going to call it. I don't know if that's what it is, but that's what we're going to say. At the sacrificial ceremony, when everyone else was down there basically pleading and begging for their life in the game, you had nothing to say. You didn't even ask <laughs> calmly for anybody to save you. You had nothing to say you just stood there and was like wherever the chips fall they may and he was like to me that gives traitor and I was like yep yeah. come on let's switch the focus let's switch the focus because the people are getting off track they on track but they getting off track okay <laughs> if y'all gonna get her make sure she the last one let's go back over here to Parvati I need y'all to go back over here to Parvati okay <laughs> So right behind John, Peter comes into the conversation. He's like, man, look, I need y'all to focus. Dan 100% left this nugget before he got up out of here and he gave us Phaedra. I'm trying to tell y'all he gave us, like he's really hard pressing this agenda to get Phaedra out of here. And that damn Kate, <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you. <laughs> Kate has become my girl. She has become my, I got to go follow her on social media. Kate has become my girl. Cause she comes in immediately and she's like, what's your issue with Phaedra? What's your issue with Phaedra? Cause this whole time since I've been here, you've been pushing this agenda of poverty. And so now all of a sudden today, you done hopped on this Phaedra train and not only hopped on the Phaedra train, you are driving the train. What, what happened? Does, the, Parvati's train ran out of gas? What, what, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? So Kate is coming in hot, okay? She coming at Trishel and she coming at Peter too. And so Trishel comes back with a, I check my notes, I check my notes, I check my notes. We don't care about the notes. We, we don't care about the notes. I think that the notes don't exist personally, but we don't care about the notes. So as they're having the conversation and Kate is trying to get to the bottom of how the hell did Peter suddenly shift from Parvati over to Phaedra, Phaedra comes in, my girl comes in, and she's like, that's because it's a backhand deal going on. And I said, that's my girl. That's what I mean. You stay in the room long enough to hear the deal and get out in enough time so you don't have to commit to the deal. My girl said, Peter approached us. 
me and Parvati, and he tried to make a deal with us, and I decided that I didn't want to be a part of that. I felt uncomfortable, so I got up and walked off. But these two stayed in a room and ended up making a deal with each other, and so that is why Peter is no longer worried about her, and he is now focused on me. And see this? This right here. This right here, because this is where Peter messed up. Peter didn't tell the most faithful of the faithful, the little alliance he got. He didn't tell them about the deal he made with poverty. That never came up. And so now in their mind, it's like, so you got recruited by who we know is a traitor, which is poverty. She tried to recruit you. You're telling us that you said no, but then now you made this deal with her and all of a sudden, all of a sudden it's about Phaedra. Like the math ain't looking like it's working in your favor, Peter. <laughs> it's just not working out and that's where he messed up and this is what I mean when I said earlier and I was like I thought Phaedra slipped up when she talked about how Peter was acting fishy and she said that in front of John but now that this deal has come up and John didn't know about the deal now I think the seed that Phaedra left in front of John about Peter acting fishy is now starting to get to John just a little bit and I'm like oh my gosh here we go people here we go and so I'm getting excited because everybody is out of control like baby it's it's out of control Alan come in here and give your people some life vests because the ship is sinking okay the ship is sinking so before they start voting CT has this confessional that pops in right and he's saying all of the things that they are saying about Phaedra is making sense and now he's starting to question Phaedra and I'm like OCT I mean yes but OCT <laughs> OCT no but yes because yes <laughs> but no CT no so they start voting right and as the votes are happening it's going Phaedra and it's going Parvary that's the way that it's happening right so it comes down to the deciding vote which is CT. If CT casts a vote for poverty, poverty goes home. And so CT makes a statement and he's like, I just don't feel right voting for somebody who lit my torch. Talking about Phaedra. That's what I'm saying. My girl is on it. She knows what she's doing. You reap what you sow, okay? She sowed a good deed and she reaped it right back, okay? <laughs> That was her harvest, okay? And so he decided he was going to vote poverty out. And that put the nails in her coffin and solidified her being banished, right? So she gets up there, she talks in front of everyone, and she lets them know that she is, in fact, a traitor. And baby, this is the part where I need Phaedra to milk all of the, are you okay? I know that was hard for you, but you handle it so well. I need her to milk all of that. I need her to milk that idea of, I'm wounded right now. I'm so hurt that y'all would even think that about me. Like, I need her to milk that because I need these tables to turn. Do you understand? I need them to turn. So poverty's gone, right? And now Peter is having a conversation with MJ. Oh, now you want to talk to somebody. Now you want to you wanna include MJ in the plan all of a sudden, right? So he's having a conversation where he's confiding in MJ. And he's like, man, I just, I can't believe how Peter all of a sudden is starting to trust poverty. And how he felt like, you know what I'm saying? Now we all know he was actively working with a traitor. Knowing she was a traitor, he was actively working with her. And so this is starting to raise questions. He done made this little deal that Phaedra was talking about. We know that they tried to recruit him. And so now all of these things are not working in Peter's favor. All of these things are like, it's not going to be good for you. And so now this trail that Peter has left of these random decisions he's making, they're not working in his favor. And the group is starting to question him. And I like where this is going. I like where this is going, okay? <laughs> so Peter decides he wants to grab Kate and try to do some damage control, okay? Because he understands that she's a great vote to have and she's not on his side right now because she was on his throat in this round table, okay? So he's trying to talk to her and Kate is not here for it. That's my girl. She's going to stick to her gun. She's like, no, you actively worked with a traitor knowing she was a traitor. You made a deal with her and worked with her in this game. You pretty much slapped the rest of the faithfuls in the face. You cannot be trusted. So whatever you're trying to say to me, say it. But I'm telling you now, I'm never going to work with you. The casting. <laughs> the ca I learned today. I learned today. <laughs>
that's my girl. <laughs> that's my girl. I'm telling y'all, the rise of Kate and John in my list of people that I'm rooting for has skyrocketed. You don't even know. <laughs> You don't even know. So now everyone is going to bed and it's time for the traitor, <laughs> the traitor, singular, uno, one, <laughs> to go into the traitor's chamber, okay, and figure out who to send home. Now, Phaedra's in there and she's by herself, as she should be, the last one standing, as she should be. Alan walks in and he's like, hey, I have an opportunity for you to recruit someone. You cannot do this by yourself. You need someone with you. I have an opportunity for you to pull someone to become a traitor with you. Now, the thing with this recruit is they cannot say no, okay? <laughs> Either they're going to join you or they're going home. Okay, so they only have one option. It's join the team or get up out of the castle, right? <laughs> and so immediately she's like, oh, let's go get Kate. And I'm like, yes, girl, yes, girl, yes, girl. Because I think the duo of Phaedra and Kate is going to be out of control. The castle won't be able to take it. The castle will not be able to take it. I think it's going to be so good. The only thing that I can think of that may stand in the way is Kate is very much a straight shooter. Okay? So I don't want her to be having a conversation and she slip up and say, okay, well, me and Phaedra. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh. Like, that's my only concern. But other than that, I think this is going to be such an iconic duo and I cannot wait to see how this plays out. So the episode ends with Kate going to the dungeon and being locked in there and her whole monologue, her entrance into there and being locked in there was absolute TV gold. This is where they cut the episode off and so we won't get to know what happens until episode nine. But guess what? Y'all guess what? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I want to sing Usher song so bad, but copyright ain't about to get me. <laughs> I'm so excited, y'all. I'm so, so, so excited. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me. I am excited to be where we are together so we can continue this thing out. Ah, if you liked this video, make sure you like this video. As always, make sure you share the video. Tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody else to come and watch the video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Those of you who have, oh, I love you so much. Thank you for rocking with me the way that you do. Turn those notifications on because the videos are coming out, okay? <laughs> and yeah, until my next video, I love you guys with the love of the Lord. And um, I'm out. <laughs>